Well, the weather turned right. just in time for the start of team workouts. Uh, kind of a, just gives a road view what you think going into Friday. No, you're exactly right. And, and, and obviously yesterday was our very first day to be able to get out on the field. And um, it was an incredible day. We were able to get a great day of defensive work done. Uh, a lot of ground balls, a lot of fly balls. It was just a really good feeling for our guys to be able to get on the field, run around, um, you know, just kind of get some of that energy and excitement going. Um, we've been inside every day since August, you know, so it's just one of those things where you kind of don't realize what you don't have until it's not there anymore. And now we got a chance to get out on the field yesterday. It was just a really great day for us. Um, guys were flying around the field, lots of energy, and we got a lot of great work done yesterday. Can you give us kind of an overview of the team's health right now? Yeah, in, in terms of health-wise, I mean, everybody that's going to be available for us at the beginning part of the year is ready to go right now for the start of spring practice. Um, you know, several guys coming back from arm injury in terms of, you know, our pitching and pitching depth. Um, those guys are back for the most part. Um, Ethan Small has been back with us all fall. Um, his bullpens are going great right now. He was outstanding for us all fall. So um, really looking forward to some really big things from Ethan in terms of major contributions to our 2018 baseball team. Um, Keegan James threw live yesterday, uh, did an outstanding job through strikes with, with three pitches. So um, in terms of getting back some of these arms healthy again, uh, from a head coaching standpoint, that's a great feeling. Um, and, and just trying to increase our depth on the mound, uh, which is a really great feeling compared to where we were a year ago, where we were so shorthanded on the mound. Is there anybody that won't be available at the start of the year? Um, well, there'll be several guys that are kind of going to be joining us as the season goes, you know, in terms of, you know, rehab and, and pitch count and, and getting their stamina back up again on the mound. And, you know, anytime you kind of start talking about, um, pitching and arm injuries and elbow injuries and Tommy John surgery and labrum surgery, those guys, those are major, major arm surgeries. And, you know, it's not, it's not one of these things where everybody bounces back so quickly. And, you know, everybody's kind of on their own different time frame in terms of coming back and being competitive again on the mound. So, um, you know, in terms of where we are, Blake Smith is back throwing again and he'll pitch this weekend for us. Um, fifth year senior that had a tremendous year two years ago for the 2016 SEC championship team here. Um, I already mentioned Ethan Small, I mentioned Keegan James, so um, Kale Bro is another guy that's back on the mound right now throwing and should be able to throw this weekend for us. So guys, it, it's an exciting time, you know, when you're talking about trying to elongate that pitching staff. Um, you know, I, I, I can't speak highly enough about the job that Gary Henderson did a year ago for us. Um, in terms of just, you know, piecing that staff together and making sure we were able to get through all the innings of a full 56-game season and then obviously a super regional run. So um, I, I can't speak highly enough about Gary Henderson as a pitching coach and what he was able to do last year and really excited to, to be able to hand him a full um, holster of bullets this year, so to speak. So um, looking forward to it, a lot of excitement. We're certainly rocking and rolling, ready to go. Well, the stadium construction, will that hinder any of y'all's practice plans throughout the first couple of weeks? No. You know, one of the things that, that has been outstanding about the group that's working is, is those guys are working around the clock. I mean, it's seven days a week that those guys are out here working on Duty Noble. And um, we've been told that Friday, once our spring practice starts um, in time for the season, that we're going to be full go on the field. We're going to be able to scrimmage on Friday. Uh, there won't be any restrictions. There won't be anything that we won't be able to do on Friday in terms of preparing for our season and getting our guys ready to go for that opening weekend at Southern Miss. So um, yesterday was a great day on the field. Today we'll be right back out there. We'll be able to hit on the field today. Yesterday was a defensive day for us. We're still in our individual periods right now, today and tomorrow. Obviously Friday will be our very first day of full team practice where we'll have our complete team together. Um, and obviously they'll be hitting and defense and base running and, and everything that we're going to need to get done in terms of being ready for opening day as a team will be able to start on Friday, and we're really excited and looking forward to it. Took said, Took said the one goal for this team is to win a national championship. Can this team get there and do it? <laughs> I think that's always the goal for Mississippi State baseball. You know, one of the things that we talk about all the time is so many of the achievements that this program has had and done in the past. You're talking about a program, guys, that's been to the College World Series nine times. You're talking about a program that has been in numerous regionals and has won so many SEC championships and super regional appearances and played for a national championship as late as 2013. And 
college baseball Hall of Famers, major leaguers with 3,000 hits and five, everything that you can possibly do in college baseball has been done here at Mississippi State except that one major massive thing. And that one major thing is we have yet to win the very last college baseball game of the season. And that everybody in this program, everybody that's under the Mississippi State baseball umbrella, that drives us every single day. Um, and it is a relentless pursuit of it. It's a relentless work ethic every single day, whether it's our current team, whether it's in recruiting, it doesn't matter, guys. Everything that we do here wants to be able to accomplish that very last thing of winning the first ever national championship here at Mississippi State. I believe we have the greatest fan base in the country. The support from our administration is incredible. Everybody is all in on Mississippi State baseball. And myself, our staff, and our players want to do everything we possibly can to help them be able to put that first national sh championship trophy up. Um, and, and, and doing so, um, representing the great players and the great history of this program, um, and, and win one for everybody that's ever been a part of it and put it on a national map right now. Going into your first season, you said because of the expedited nature of it, you weren't going to mess with a lot of guys' offensive mm -hmm. approach to play. Right, sure. Now you've had a summer and a fall to work on that. Uh, yep. Do you see a difference? Um, you know, I, I think one of the things I'm really excited about is just um, so many guys that were kind of thrown into the fire last year in terms of having to learn on the job in the SEC. Guys, the SEC is the toughest amateur baseball conference in the world. I mean, it is 30 games. It is an absolute dogfight for 30 games. I'm on. I, I believe you don't win the SEC. You just outlast everybody else. You know, um, and so offensively, we have so many guys that got at bats last year and played major roles and heavy contributions to our super regional team. And now those guys are back. Whether you're talking about guys like Hunter Stovall, Elijah McNamee, Hunter Van Saw. Luke Alexander, these are guys that really had their very first taste of SEC action last year, um, and they had incredible seasons, and they've gone off and had great summers. All of those guys were summer ball all-stars. They hit home runs, they played great, and now they've all had great falls for us. So those guys are, now I consider them veterans in college baseball, and um, certainly expect those guys to have tremendous 21, 22-year-old seasons in college baseball this year. Um, I feel like they've worked extremely hard and prepared themselves for the success that they're going to have. And then obviously you return a guy like Jake Mangum, um, who has had two incredible years here at Mississippi State. Obviously as a freshman, he wins the SEC batting title for the first time in the history of the league. Last year he hits 330 and plays half the season with a broken hand. So, um, you know, he's a guy that I think is going to have a tremendous junior season. I think he's a guy that could, could, when it's all said and done, be an SEC player of the year in a completely different mold than obviously Brent Rooker did from a year ago, but maybe more along the lines of a Tony Kemp from Vanderbilt several years ago where somebody's going to hit north of 400, steal a lot of bases, and impact the game in so many different ways. So um, really excited about the group that we have coming back offensively. Certainly guys have made adjustments. We've got several younger guys. Um, that, are going to in, that are going to impact our team early this year. Um, several names that I kind of want to let everybody know about that I think have a chance to really be on the field early for us. Freshman Tanner Allen from Mobile, Alabama. Freshman Rowdy Jordan from Auburn, Alabama. Um, I think both of those guys are going to find their way into our opening day lineup in some capacity. Not exactly sure where they're going to play just yet, but we've got several weeks to kind of figure that out. But both of them are extremely advanced offensive players that are going to hit the baseball, use the field, can steal bases, just mature veteran type of at-bats from 18, 19-year-old kids. And I really believe those guys are going to have tremendous freshman years for us. You referenced being a little bit more comfortable with the, the stabilizing of the pitching staff. Right. Going into last year versus going into this <clears throat> year, how, how do you feel about preseason this year as compared to last year? You know, I, I, last overall, year, yeah, team overall. a year ago at this time, we were still trying to learn everybody's names, you know, and had an understanding of, okay, I know Jake Mangum, we competed against him last year. Brent Rooker had a tremendous season the year before. You kind of knew two or three different guys, but it was really six or seven or eight guys that we're going to have to play that we didn't know very much about. And there was so much of an evaluation period that was going on a year ago at this time. And now there's a greater comfort level in guys like Stovall and McNamee and Vansaw and Luke Alexander in terms of what those guys are going to be able to bring to the table each and every day and, and what they're going to be able to do to help us win. 
Um, and so now it's a matter of, you know, we play, what, in three weeks? I think, God, maybe not even a month now, right? I think we're 23, 24 days, that type of thing, away from opening day. And, you know, we're going to try to enter squad every single day when we're on the field once we get to Friday. That's the part and piece that we didn't, we weren't able to have in the fall. So we've got to get some questions answered in terms of several positions that are still up for grabs and looking for guys to really, you know, go win jobs here in the next three weeks before obviously opening day against an uh, outstanding Southern Mississippi team. You mentioned positions being up for grabs. Would the two top of your mind be a catcher and shortstop? Um, I think those are certainly in the mix. Um, regardless of who plays shortstop, whether it's Luke Alexander or Hunter Stovall, I feel like both of those guys are going to be able to play it at a really high level. Um, and both of those guys are going to be able to help us win ball games there. I think if you're talking about Luke Alexander playing short, Hunter Stovall playing second, I think you might have one of the best middle combinations in the SEC. And I think both of those guys are ready and primed to have tremendous junior seasons for us. Um, the battle behind the plate is ongoing each and every day between Marshall Gilbert and Dustin Skelton. Um, both of those guys have looked extremely well during their individual sessions, um, but ultimately it's about going out there and performing under the lights. And, you know, that catching position is one where you need tremendous amounts of leadership. And you're looking for guys to be able to control a pitching staff and be able to receive it and block the baseball and do those kind of things that we put a really high uh, level of importance on in this program. So that's a battle that's going to kind of come down to the wire, I think, here in the next three weeks. Um, there's going to – somebody new is going to have to play third base, and we're going to have to find a new first baseman too. So, um, you know, there's positions available all over the field. Um, not exactly sure who's going to play those spots just yet, but feel really good about the candidates that we have that are going to fill those roles for us. Looking at your rotation, it seems like you've got a ton of options for the second and third spot in that, that weekend rotation. How many guys are in that mix? Um, in, in terms of you know weekend rotation, obviously have a tremendous amount of confidence in what we're going to get on Friday nights out of Connor Pilkington. You're talking about an um, innings eater, workhorse kind of guy that's got a chance to be a first round pick in June. Um, and then after him, guys, there's a, can't, there's a tremendous pool of applicants. <laughs> that we didn't quite have a year ago. Um, and I think when you're starting to talk about those guys, you're talking about a mix of, you know, Ethan Small, you're talking about Jacob Billingsley, you're talking about Cole Gordon, um, you're talking about JP France, who's a fifth year transfer for us this year. Zach Neff is another fifth year transfer for us. So, you know, guys, I feel really good about the applicants that are gonna be able to pitch on the weekends for us. Um, those questions are gonna be answered here in the next three weeks, but in terms of, who it could potentially be, I would look for, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to come from those pool of guys that we just mentioned. And it's going to leave us a tremendous talented arm for a Tuesday or a Wednesday start, which is going to be um, certainly a welcome addition to the 2018 version of the Dogs. <laughs> Is Ethan Small available for the weekend? Is he, on uh, is he on track for the first weekend? Yeah, Ethan Small is good to go. He pitched all fall for us. He will pitch this Sunday in, in scrimmages and inner squads. Um, and he's been outstanding, guys. You know, he is another six foot four left handed pitcher that's up to 95 with his fastball with a good breaking ball and a changeup. Um, he's a guy that's really grown up here this year in terms of, you know, the maturity and leadership and of what it's going to take to be able to pitch on the weekends here in the SEC. And, you know, he's been outstanding. Um, you know, the biggest difference between Pilkington and Small, their pitch packages are the same. Um, but you've got Connor Pilkington with a tremendous amount of track record in the SEC, having made 17 SEC starts last year on a Friday night. And I think there's the biggest difference between the two. One has done it for two years, and one only has 10 innings here at Mississippi State due to, due to an elbow injury. So I'm um, looking forward to big things from those guys. But, you know, I can certainly envision – you know, going Pilkington on a Friday, Ethan Small on a Saturday. Now you're talking about two six four lefties with mid nineties fastballs. That's a pretty good uh, package to roll out there on a Friday and Saturday to try to keep the score down. Anything else? All good, good. guys. Right. I appreciate everything, man. It's good seeing everybody again. Thanks,